أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله استعينه واستغفره واستهديه وأؤمن به ولا أكفره وأؤاد من يكفر وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسول أما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحاكم التكاثر حتى زرتم المقابر كلا سوف تعلمون ثم كلا سوف تعلمون صدق الله العظيم I seek refuge with Allah from Satan be rejected in the name of Allah who is most gracious most merciful Alhamdulillah, once again we thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for sparing our lives and giving us the health and guidance of coming out and offering our Juma Salah. Praise be to Allah who has created man from water. Then he established relationships of lineage and marriage for he has power over all things. And I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who creates mankind from a single person and create of like nature his mate. And from them both spread countless men and women. Praise be to him, the one who begets none and was begotten by none. And there has never been anyone co-equal to him. For him is all praise. He is the great bestower and the originator of the heavens and the earth. Of everything he has created peers. He is most worthy of devotion. He is the most compassionate of those who are masters. The most generous of those who are asked for help and the most bounteous of those who give help. And I bear witness that Muhammad upon whom be peace is his servant and messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shower his blessings on our beloved prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the unlettered prophet who affirmed the faith in Allah and his book. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon him the best of his mercy and give him eminence over all people on the day of judgment. Alhamdulillah, my dear respected Allahs, my dear brothers and sisters, we are still in the blessed months of the year. Sooner or later we will come, you know, you know, come off one year and we will begin with another year, a new year. And so too, my dear brothers and sisters, as time goes, we as human beings, we are coming closer to the grave. Every day passes, every week that passed, and every month and every year that passed, our lives are shortening and we are coming closer to the grave. Alhamdulillah, today my topic will be life in the grave. As human beings, we go through four stages. And one of the stage is that is in the belly of our mothers. Here in this stage, we spend either seven to nine months. After that, we have to come out. Then the next life is in this dunya, where we live. Our beloved Prophet 
Sallallahu Alaihi told us the average age in this dunya is about three scores and ten, 70 years. And then after we die, we go to the grave. And after the grave is the hereafter, which is hell or paradise. In the grave, we have to wait. But uh, uh, and the waiting period, we don't know. And here too, when we, after that waiting period, after the judgment, then we have, we will know if we're going to Jannah or Jahannam. And Jannah is forever. And hell, we may spend some time there and then go to Jannah. We don't know how long. So today's khutbah will be a little in life in the grave. It scares everyone because we don't know how much of what will happen to us in the grave. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informs us in the Holy Quran about graves in many surahs. For example, in Surah Al-Takathur, the piling up, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, A'udhu billahi mina shaytanir rajim, Al-haku muttakathur, Hatta zurtumul maqabir, Kalla sawfa ta'alamun, Thumma kalla sawfa ta'alamun, The meaning of which, the mutual rivalry for piling up the good things of this world diverts you from the more serious things until he visit the graves. But nay, he soon shall know the reality. Again, you shall know. And this surah is taken from chapter 102, ayah 1 to 4. And in another surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, A'uzu billahi mina shaytanir rajim Wa izal quburu bu'usirat Alimat nafusum ma qaddamat wa akkarat And when the graves are taunted upside down And when the graves are turned upside down then shall each soul know what it has sent forward and what it has kept back. My dear brothers and sisters, human beings are to live in four different forms during their complete lifespan. The first life is that in the wombs of the mothers when, where the soul is to join the flesh. The second life is the one we are living on this planet where the flesh and the soul are one, working together. The third life is that of the grave where the soul and the flesh separates from one another. The flesh goes into the soil in the grave and the soul is to be taken to Barza and is stored there until the day of judgment. The fourth place of life is the one in the hereafter, which is eternal life, either in paradise or hell. Everyone has to go to the grave. And before going to paradise, in as much as everyone had to be in the womb of the mother before coming out of, to this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again tells us, A'uzu billahi mina shaytanir rajim Minha kalaknakum wa fiha nuidukum wa minha nukurijukum taratan ukura From the earth did we create you and into it shall we return you and from it Shall we bring you forth out once again? Chapter 20, Ayah 55. My dear brothers and sisters, we have to go to the grave so that our flesh may turn back to the soil 
of which we were created. We have to go to the grave in order to prepare ourselves for paradise and heaven or for hell and the fire. We can go to heaven or paradise without going to the grave. We have to visit the grave and we have to live there for some time. The grave become a center of transformation, a center of molding, and a center of preparation for the eternal life that we have to live. While death is a process of separation of the soul from the flesh, the grave is a place where soul and flesh may join one another at different times. The grave is like a cocoon of a caterpillar before it becomes a butterfly. From the days of Adam salam, to the day of the last person to be created on this earth, people have to go through these four phases of life. The son of Adam salam, was taught by the crow or the bird how to bury his brother in the soil. And in this regard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us again in the Quran, A'uzu billahi mina shaitanir rajim Faba'asallahu guraban yabkasu fil ardi liyuriyahu kaifa yuwari sawata aki Kola ya wailata a'ajaz tu an akuna misla hazal gurabi fa uwari ya sawata aki fa asabaha minan nadimin. The meaning of which, then Allah sent a raven who scratched the ground to show him how to hide the shame of his brother. We all know the story of Cain and Abel. When one killed the other, he didn't know what to do. You see? He didn't know what to do. And here the bird, he saw the bird that come and scratch the ground, move the earth, and this is how he did it. Bury his brother. My dear brothers and sisters, the life of a grave is a life of reward or punishment. Everyone is to be asked by the angels, Munkar and Nakir. We are to be asked about many things that we have done in the life. Belief, intention, deeds and actions. In one hadith, a person is to be asked about the creed of his faith. And the record, the record states, it is narrated by Al-Bara bin Azib, that the Prophet Sallallahu said, when a Muslim is asked in his grave, and he witnessed that there is no one worthy of worship except Allah, and that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, this proved the meaning of the ayah. The meaning of which Allah will establish in strength those who believe with the word that stands firm in this world and in the hereafter. Chapter 14, Ayah 7. And in another hadith, it is reported that the soul is to join the flesh in the grave. And then the two angels are asked, or the two angels are to question of the deceased, ask the question to the deceased. Narrated by Qatada to Anas radiallahu an, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, when the deceased is placed in his grave and when his friends leave and depart him, 
He will hear the trotting of their souls. Two angels will make him to sit, and they will say, What did you say about this man, Muhammad? The believer will say, I bear witness that he was the servant of, of the messenger of Allah. They will say to the deceased, Look at your place in hell. Allah has substituted it with a place in paradise. They see it all together. However, the, the disbeliever or the hypocrite will be asked about Muhammad. He will say, I don't know. I used to say what people said. The two angels say to him, How come you did not know and you did not read about him? They then, for they then will beat him heavily with a metal hammer. He shout or his shout painfully till his neighbor hears him, except the angels themselves. My dear brothers and sisters, no one of us can hear the deceased when he is punished. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who hears. It says in another surah, أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يسمع من يشاء وما أنت بمصب إمن في القبور Allah can make any that he wills to hear but thou canst not make those to hear who are buried in the grave chapter 35 ayah 22 my dear brothers and sisters, the grave is indeed a place of purification through punishment or a place of reward. As a place of purification, it is reported that a person was punished because he did not pray or he did not stop injustice which was inflicted upon people. In one hadith it is said, narrated by Ibn Masur radiallahu an, that the Prophet وسلم, said, Angels were ordered to beat 100 whips on a servant of Allah in his grave. He was surprised as to why he was beaten. He requested Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. The beating was reduced to one. The grave was filled with fire. When punishment stopped, he woke up. Then he asked why he was whipped. He was answered, or he answered that, you prayed without cleanliness, and you passed by a person who was inflicted with injustice, but you did not help him. So alhamdulillah, my dear brothers and sisters, we see here you pray without cleanliness. We all know that the key to the salah is wudu, purification. And the key to this, um, uh, uh, the Jannah is the Salah. My dear brothers, you know, a couple of times I have noticed when we come and we go to the washroom and we make that or we, you know, if we go and we make number one, then what happened? We see some of them, some of these brothers stand up and they number one. Which is not good, which is not the sunnah of Prophet Sallallahu When we go to that bathroom, we sit. We don't stand up and urinate because this urine will splatter and come back on your clothes. And when we urinate, then we mess the seat. And there will be other brothers who will have to use it. And when they go and they the jug or the clothes touch that urine, what happened? There is no salah for that person. You see? So this is why, you know, we have to try and follow the sunnah of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When we go to that washroom, if we see it dirty, then we clean it and use it. We leave it in a better position, you know? It is very disgusting when we go. This is a clean place and a new place, my dear brothers and sisters. And sometimes when you go in, you just feel to walk out back. Because we as Muslims, we don't follow the sunnah. 
You see? So let us all, when we go and we use that place, first of all, know, use the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sit down on the seat, urinate and wash ourselves. Then make wudu and then come in and pray your salah. Cleanliness is half of deen, half of faith. My dear brothers and sisters, we are Muslims. We have the best example. But what are we doing? Where are we heading? Where is the knowledge? Or some of us know and we don't practice. Let us all wake up, my dear brothers and sisters, before it's too late. Let us all prepare ourselves for the hereafter. Our life in this world is very short. We don't know when Malkan Maud will come to us, when he will visit us. In another place, it is recorded that one person was punished because he did not clean himself after urination. And another was punished because he was passing rumors to others and backbiting. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Wal Asri in al Insan lafi khusr. Illa al Ladina amanu wa aminu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqi wa tawasaw bil sabri.